Yeah, we, we have been seeing for the last 18 to 24 months that there has been a total shift within our labour market. Now, now, Esther, you remember that we've been talking about labour and skill shortages for years, but the pandemic definitely exacerbated a situation. So as we came out of lockdown in um, the final lockdowns in uh, March 2021, demand for um, different jobs went through the roof. We were seeing two million plus vacancies being advertised on a regular basis. And uh, and actually the other side of that is we saw the supply of people was declining. So we've seen candidate availability, so job seekers looking for work availability at the lowest we've had in the 25 years we've been collecting data. So a big shift in our labour market. Why? I mean, I, I'm bored of hearing people talking about work-life balance, but they seem to be forgetting about work. What, what's happened? What's, what's the mental mindset? So, so it was first of all, it's something that recruiters were telling us they were picking up on as uh, as we were coming out of the pandemic. People were reassessing their priorities. They've been put in a hugely difficult situation um, during the pandemic. And you, you mentioned over 50s in particular. They're often called the squeeze generation. So still have children at home, childcare responsibilities. Getting childcare right, making sure that there's somewhere for the provision for your children to be, particularly when schools were closed, was so, so difficult. At the same time, squeeze generation, they have responsibilities for older people, caring for parents. Really, really hard. Domiciliary care is nowhere near where it needs to be in this country. So that infrastructure just doesn't exist in terms of what we need for people to be working. And recruiters were saying that means that people were reassessing their priorities, had spent a considerable amount of effort during lockdowns, trying to keep things together. Something has to give. And maybe, maybe it needs to be work right now. So taking that step back and becoming economically inactive is how people are being referred to. And Kate, it's not just the over 50s. And I get that because you've explained all the complications in their life and there's only so many hours in the day and they're getting pulled every which way. But it's also uh, the younger people who are now looking for flexi time, part time, maybe doing agency stuff. So that's sort of, I don't know, your 20s to 40s. And people who are at college or further education, higher education are staying there longer. So is this a total reassessment of how modern society works? In some regards, but then we've also seen some of these things for a very long time. So we know there's four main reasons why people are choosing to work in a, in a more flexible way. You mentioned two of them. So you've got younger people who are looking at their um, education and they're trying to work alongside that. So they're, they're still in full time education, but need to earn some money, need to gain some experience. Really, really important to employers that you see that somebody's got the right skill set and has given the work a go for when they leave education. We've mentioned older people. So people stepping away from the jobs market, taking that tentative steps towards retirement. 50 plus is way too early to be retiring, though. So but wanting to work more flexibly. And if your employer is not offering that in your permanent job then people making different choices. And the other reasons that people were working flexibly is that they want to give something else a go. They want to get a new skill set. They want to try something different. And the other one is caring responsibilities. They simply can't do everything that they need to do. You said not enough hours in the day. So flexible working has to be the way forward. And that's the piece that employers really need to be focusing on now. If they're saying that they offer flexible working, they need to be walking that talk and making sure that they really do. And I wonder if things might change again. It seems lockdown changed what we were doing. But as we have this cost of living issue here now, could that change people's minds again? Because, of course, those who are on the minimum wages working full time, they'll need support. People who are pensioners who won't be working anymore, they need support. But people who have elected here to come out of the workplace as they face these increased bills, do you think they'll go back into the workplace? Do you think they they will do extra hours. So we're all living longer. And as I said, I think 50 and 50 plus way too early to be even thinking about retirement. How will we manage in that situation? It may be one thing to get a lump sum drawing your pension down a bit early, but that money won't last in the, the 20, 30, 40 years that might exist post that. And so, yes, I think some people will have no choice but to reconsider whether they need to go back into the labour market. Now, they won't go back into the labour market in a way that um, means that they are sacrificing all the things that they meant they had to give up work in the first place. So if we don't have the wraparound support in terms of the care that's available. If we don't get simple things right, like 
transport. What is it that you need to do to make sure that somebody can get to the site of work? And, and I think the really important thing is these people won't be necessarily walking into a job center. Um, that won't be their first ch choice because they're not unemployed. They're, they're choosing to be economically inactive. So we need to get the support to where and the careers advice that people need and particularly financial advice in the places where they're going to. And it won't be a job center necessarily. And Kate, my final question there, I was looking at some sort of international reports last night and globally and looking to America, they said 37 percent of American sort of chief executives now have increased uh, by 37 percent their robots. That's what they're looking for, robots. And they said two thirds of executives are now looking at greater automation of the, in the workplace. So what I'm wondering, they're looking for a dependable, reliable workforce. And if they're thinking that's not staff and human beings, are we really heading down the ro route now for robots and automation? So people talk about the fourth industrial revolution where you have um, a greater preponderance of digital skills and, and automation. And yes, that is definitely a direction of travel. And we've seen an exponential growth in the demand for people with digital skills to enter the workforce. What happens, though, in any of these changes in our labour market and changes in the economy is it creates different jobs. So, yes, there might be not the jobs available that, that can be automated, but it creates a wealth of different jobs and different opportunities. And if we don't get that careers advice and guidance right to young people so that they know these opportunities exist, that's where we'll go wrong. That's what we really need to focus on.